So, uh, welcome to this new uh, content feature that I'm trying. Um, I'm looking at uh, my favorite fights of Sylvie. I was just looking at this fight the other day, uh, just amazed by it, and um, I, I thought, hey, maybe I can just, I mean, it's kind of a breakdown, but it's really my appreciation for like the hidden uh, interior technical brilliance of Sylvie as a fighter. Um, if you're not familiar with her, She's, um, excuse me while I like kind of scrub through this video to the beginning of it. Uh, Sylvie is the female fighter with more documented professional fights uh, than any other female in history, regardless of sport, and the most fights of any uh, non-Thai in Thailand, uh, male or female, by far. Um, she has, I think, 259 fights in Thailand. And one of the things that's really special about her and uh, here she is getting the Mong Khan blessing, take, uh, the Mong Khan taken off so she can fight. Um, one of the very cool things about her is that she, um, let me set another video. She um, fights way up in weight, something that's very rare in the sport. Um, uh, Thai female fighters tend to fight smaller Farong, uh, I, I mean, larger Farong. Uh, Westerners. Uh, the f Westerners often get the weight advantage in Thailand. Sylvie is the opposite. She gets huge weight disadvantages, uh, mostly because she's um, able to fight way up. And this video is kind of about documenting how she is able to fight so far up in weight. She normally is fighting like three weight classes up. She's a 46 kilo or so like she walks around about 46 kilos. In this fight, she was at 46 and a half. They weigh in right before, um, like an hour before uh, the fight, and not cutting weight just for gambling purposes. So she's about at 100 and 102 pounds here. You're looking at her. And her opponent is 60 kilos, like 60 kilos. Probably, I don't know what that is, like five, could be six weight classes up. Like an enormous, opponent and one of the things that makes this fight special is that it kind of like is an extreme uh, challenge that also will illustrate how she's able to defeat fighters that are bigger than her um, she's a huge proponent of um, the Moy Cal fight style if you don't know 60 kilos 46 kilos, about 30% of her body weight. Uh, the camera's gonna be a shaky camera. I was sitting, uh, I had two cameras in my hand. It was uh, pretty hard to get the footage, but it'll still be enjoyable. Um, so she's fighting, she came to the stadium. She had three, I think three weeks before or so, fought Tanan Chinook, uh, Kyosumrit, who is a perennial world champion at her weight, uh, which is I think 51 kilos. And Tanan Chinook was about, when she fought her, she was about to go to Japan to fight for her world title. I think she was defending it in Japan at 51 kilos WPMF title. And she booked Sylvie as a kind of like uh, focus fight, the fight before the world title fight. And Sylvie beat her. Uh, which was extraordinary. She's a very talented fighter. Um, so we fought her many times, but just to, to set the table a little bit here, in this stadium, she had recently she just beaten Tanan Chinook, who's probably the best female fighter in the region in the North and one of the best f female fighters in the world, giving up like maybe three or four kilos, I mean, three or four weight classes. And uh, so this fight, she's come to Taipei Stadium and this is what's so extraordinary about it. She's facing, she was supposed to be facing Nang, Nang Hong, Leung Persert, who's a very experienced 54 kilo fighter, another weight challenge. And at the last minute, her gym, Leung Persert, switched out um, this fighter, who's not 54 kilos, she's 60 kilos. Um, um, Hong Morakot, I believe her name is. And she's really not only strong and big, she's very skilled, which you're gonna see. 
So I kind of wanted to just run through this video and just show what are the things I see uh, that are just so interesting. This is the first moment. Now this is, a, what's cool about this fight is this is a uh, Southpaw versus Southpaw. At this point, Sylvie is, south, is fighting Southpaw. She fought Southpaw for about a year. Kara Hot changed her to Southpaw. Um, and this is one of the most important aspects of the fight, right off. Sylvie's fighting Southpaw and what the entire fight is going to be this back leg kind of shift into kind of an orthodox stance. She's not gonna fight out of this stance. What she's gonna do with her rear leg is crowd the front leg of Hong Port Morakot. It's a really interesting dimension of this. She starts out with a little teep. It's a really interesting dimension of this. This is something I really wanna look at. And this whole battle is gonna be a knee to knee, front side battle, but from Southpaw. So Sylvie's basically going to just spend the fight encroaching on her, but encroaching on the closed side of Hong Morakot. Here we're gonna, Hong Morakot create some space. There's a little kick to the open side. Nothing wasted. Look at Hong Morakot's beautiful, like strong roop for stance. Hong Morakot's bouncing that front foot. Sylvie comes right there. Knee to knee. There's something about this which is kind of like um, counterintuitive. Largely, you want to be talk, um, you want to be um, attacking the open side. The where the belly button is pointing towards. But Sylvie from Southpaw is actually crowding knee to knee that front side. And the reason is, is she's disrupting, she's trying to disrupt Hong Morakot's stacks. The Southpaw fighter is really, really comfortable with a certain kind of spacing. So what she's doing, what Sylvie's doing, is she's stepping into, with that high knee, oh, here it comes. She's stepping into, with that high knee, a crowding, a spatially crowding posture. And that's because Sylvie's a clinch fighter, and eventually she wants to take this fight to the clinch. She doesn't want to fight it in space. I'm more caught stepping through, trying to intimidate, and a large part of this fight is Hong Morakot trying to intimidate Sylvie out of that close, crowded range. Bouncing that front foot, Hong Morakot. Sylvie gives a little out of range low kick. Um, stepping in, again, lead, crowding with that back leg coming forward. Hong Morakot goes to the left. She's really nice of this, it's changing the angle. She feels that kind of rear leg pressure. Sylvie scoots over, cuts her off really nicely. They reset, and here comes Sylvie again. And this is gonna be really, really interesting because Hong Morakot is 60 kilos. She's strong, fast, intuitive. She's a very skilled fighter. Sylvie popping that leg up again. It goes knee to knee. Little low kick. Hong Morakot scoops over. Reset. It's very cool. Oh, this is the first thing. This is the first thing. Hong Morakot, a little bit frustrated with that front side pressure, is going to start with her power side deforming Sylvie's root. So, big low kick to the standing leg. That would be the standing leg if Sylvie raises her back leg. Her forward check, this is the forward check from Southpaw. This is, you can see this from this, this deformation of the root. 
big ankle smash. Deformation, you see the roof is deformed. This is a big part in Muay Thai scoring. Hung Morkot has a huge advantage in that she's 60 kilos. It's gonna be very hard to deform her roof. She has 30 pounds on Sylvie and she's starting right away to chop away at the foundation. But then look at this, this is really important. This is, has to be trained. In Thailand, roof, the posture is really, really important visually. Sylvie was just transformed, deformed in her roof. Look how strong she gets right away. It's, this is a visual testament that you haven't affected me. And as a smaller fighter, this is what you have to do to beat a bigger fighter. Because as a smaller fighter, if you just go on points, every point from the bigger fighter is going to seem more powerful just by the size disparity. There we go again. So be crowding. I'm gonna rewind it on that. There she is with that knee again, crowding that lead leg. Root slightly deformed by this kick right on it. One more cot's putting power, a power kick on it. But you see that is the that is the instinctive strategy. It's not a strategy Sylvie had. And here she is again straightening up off of the root deformation. Oh, let's see what that is. There's Sylvie again with the lead knee, crowding the lead leg, or it's not the lead knee, it's, it's a forward checking knee. Here she has better um, root. She's not as deformed as much. Hong Morikot's trying to defeat. This whole fight is gonna be Hong Morikot trying to defeat that forward check turned into a shield, crowding her lead leg. Here we come towards the rope. Ah, another. Look at that deformation. Big heavy leg from Rong Hong Morikot. Boom. And look at that deformation. This is not Sylvie's lead leg this time. This is her, uh, I mean, this is not her um, forward check. This is her lead leg. But Hong Morikot's using her power side to just kick out the foundation of Sylvie's root. But again, there she goes, boom. Reestablish posture. She has a nice forward lean. She's basically showing the judges that even though I'm facing this huge opponent and everybody knows, everybody knows Sylvie in the stadium, the, the um, refs know her, the gamblers know her, they know how big Hong Morikot is. This is the girl that they gave this huge mismatch after Sylvie beat uh, Tananjanuk, who's a world champion. This is like the impossible task, really. Okay, let me jump back here. Sylvie again with this lead knee. You can see how much it's bothering Hong Morikot. She wants to solve this. Here she is like, lead teeping the leg. She's, Hong Morikot is feeling out the things that can undermine this crowding uh, forward check. And here Sylvie is distorted a little bit. You can see how she's overturned to the side. But again, Roop reestablished in range. Oh, this is beautiful. Now Hong Morikot, who's pretty sharp. Here comes Sylvie's lead knee again. Hong Morikot's just gonna skate out the side along the rope and just usher Sylvie to the side. This is a very skilled fighter. Like, look at this. All these little, she doesn't have one answer to this crowding knee. Sylvie teeps with the, with the um, rear leg. She wants to crowd on this side. Oh, 
again, a chopping, big chopping leg to bring Sylvie's root down. She's like chopping visually, very strong at the foundation. A little teep to keep that, to counter that lead, that um, forward check knee. Again, her teeps are distorting Sylvie's lead knee. Look how it's pushed in. So it's keeping her guard up pretty good, but she's basically just playing a war of space. There's a nice like. Here, the, uh, Sylvie actually cross checks the teep. So that lead knee is starting to work like, offensively for her. She's basically from Southall taking her backward back leg and she's using it as like a spear point and a shield. Ah, oh, this is a beautiful little step out. Look again, she goes to the right. Just beautiful, graceful but she's trying to solve, Hong Morkas trying to solve this knee to knee crowding. And it's counterintuitive that if someone puts up a knee, you think you have to do something somewhere else. But actually knee to knee action can be very um, psychologically impactful and also can unlock uh, problems with uh, fighters that bounce their lead leg. Oh, let's see what that is. So he gives a little um, forward check into a teep, and Hong Morkat just does a nice little scoot to the side. But you can see Sylvie's pushing that spear forward, and Hong Morkat's feeling her way about how she wants to solve this. Nice check, chopping kicks, double kick, and a teep off. Hung Morkat is in charge of the space. But Sylvie is probing. Oh, this is so beautiful. Here Hong Morkat just unleashes a beautiful little like hook. Cross. Boom. She's like, not only can I control the space uh, with my little side steps, but I can give you a nice sweet little combination. Sylvie straightens up again though. This is the thing I love about this fight, this resilience that Sylvie has. It's so beautiful. Sylvie coming again, crowding. Hamorakot hasn't quite figured out. Oh, what do we have here? A little note I took. Sylvie's uh, forward check knee crowding the space again. Morcott decides, oh uh, look, he's trying to take advantage of Sylvie on the overturn, thinks better of it, she'll get it later. Oh, that's why she's crowding Sylvie back a little bit here. She has decided that when Sylvie gets this little turn, when she distorts Sylvie to Sylvie's right roll, she's gonna answer with this elbow. And this is the first big attempt to punish the open side when Sylvie like brings that forward check forward. Elbow misses. And we have the very first clinch um, engagement. And this is really interesting. She has really nice position here. Um, Hong Morakat. She throws another elbow inside the clinch. She really wants that left elbow to affect Sylvie. And then here, Sylvie gets this arm in. This arm is a, gonna be the story of the fight. Hong Morakat has a feeling like she wants to use that uh, rear elbow as a punisher on Sylvie. And Sylvie kind of like crowds the space. And Sylvie needs to get control of that arm, like she is here, and frame it. 
One of the problems with fighters that like to uh, elbow Sylvie when she comes to clinch is it also allows her to clinch. There's that frame, you can see it. You can see it there. That frame right there. This frame is super important because it allows her to control a much physically bigger fighter. And now Sylvie, do you see this? Sylvie has these amazing jumping right knees that actually also rotate the clinch ground. She's continuing that frame right there. And she creates these right vortex turns in the clinch, which also destabilize her opponent. Look at that frame out. Look at this frame. Beautiful. And scoring as she frames. These are the, these turns, these right turns, these are really important because if you're just clinching square to square against a bigger opponent, they can stabilize themselves. If you keep rotating, here Sylvie has, it looks like she has a lock. She rotates right and scores with the left knee. Oh man. And then here, she's rotating right and then tries to break her over her knee to the left. Like this is really nice uh, directional clinch. And she's moving back. She says, this is another thing. She's dragging back a little bit. And here, Hong Murakot gets her hands locked, which is a very important defensive, well, it can be offensive, also clinch uh, thing to do. I had highlighted there, she's, Hong Murakot here has done two things. She's locked her hands together, which puts her mass in control of Sylvie. And she's jamming her chin into Sylvie's eye socket. This is something the Leon Persert girls uh, do. And in Sylvie's commentary, she talks about how at this moment in the fight, she's now just trying to get her chin out of her eye socket or her, also her cheek. They try to like split the cheek or cause pain, distort the root through a chin press with her hands locked. So Sylvie's like right now attached to a 60 kilo opponent who's locked her hands and is jamming her chin in her face. Oh, man, here we go. See, uh, Sylvie's coming over with a little bit of a cross face, which is a good thing to do to leverage that face off. She's trying to cross face that off. A good counter move, but we're talking about strength differential and size differential. And then here we go. Hong Morakot has her hands locked and she's gonna whip Sylvie down. I think her on a knee. It's just a beautiful move. But you have 60 kilo fighter, then using timing and beautiful technique. But Sylvie stands up Roop again. Like she's just been ripped to the ground by 60 kilo fighter. People are asking themselves, can Sylvie even fight, stand up with this girl? It's fucking beautiful. Again, Roop, look at this stalking posture right after being ripped to the ground. It's really important for judging. You do not want to wilt, especially as a smaller fighter. Here Sylvie comes in with that, that forward check, which she works into a step. I think she's going to jab off of it. And look at Hong Morakot's answer. Big knee to the open side. Boom. This is a huge point in Thailand. Knee, open side head distorted down. This is a huge, huge, huge point. Hong morakot has got tools that she's using over and over again against this crowding forward check. Makes this fight so interesting. It's not, is she not, Hong Morakot's not doing just one thing. She's doing 10 things. Here she is warding off that lead hand. Sylvie puts a little kick this is a good strategy. Uh, when somebody is drifting to a side, uh, especially um, when they're, uh, well, when they, when they try to scoot to one side, you hem them in with uh, kicks to either 
direction, basically to stop them. But against a 60 kilo fighter when you're 46 kilos, it's only a small point. It's not actually deterring them. Although it stopped her a little bit, maybe she felt, ah, a point just got scored on me. Again, Sylvie with a strong roop, against a, a much larger force. Here she is, comes again with that crowding um, forward check. This distance here. It's very counterintuitive, but it's actually really successful to go knee to knee, lead leg to lead leg, and crowd. Because what happens is, southpaw fighters, when they fight orthodox fighters, they get this advantage, which is it's lead leg to lead leg. And orthodox fighters will take the extra distance from the lead leg in front of them. They'll stand further back than they're accustomed to. And southpaw fighters get this like lay of the land view of distance. And they become very good at closing the distance, often with a power uh, left kick. By crowding the space, you change the setup that they're used to. I think so, we got a little bit like um, a cross check on that knee. Hung Murakab engages her in the clinch again. Oh, look at this. Sylvie's got inside position. Boom. It's really important. This is just huge. And look at that rotation. Inside position, score, rotate. Rotate. Hong Morakot cannot establish anything, even though she's the much uh, stronger or bigger fighter. And then a big leaping knee. These don't really uh, hurt that much. They can tire you out, but they're big scores. I mean, look how high up Sylvie is up above her as the smaller fighter. Like this is a big visual. As a smaller fighter, you have to keep playing the visuals game because otherwise you're just gonna get swallowed up visually. And that is the bell. Actually, that uh, <laughs> I think that last knee was a little bit after the bell, like a hair after the bell. Sylvie walks back with posture. It's really good. So cool. On to round two. And this is only going to be a two round fight, not even the whole round. Coming out, it's going to be the same thing. She's going to keep hammering that spear point of her forward check on the southpaw fighter. This is the reason why she can do this is she's a technically highly advanced clinch fighter and technique will trump strength and size. She's also physically very strong for her size, but it's actually technically the ability to put the fight where she wants it is a huge advantage. Especially against Thai female fighters that tend to like uh, space. They've done a lot of pad work, they score with long kicks, so he's like, I'm gonna eat your space. And it's pretty amazing. The camera will fly over. Starts right away with that rear leg attack, that crowding attack. Hung Murakot has like posture. Like, fuck you. Again, rear leg crowd, same thing. Amrakot moving aside, she does not like that. Again, crowding, spearing with that knee or teeps. She does not like it. She keeps like adjusting, she keeps adjusting side to side. Here she tries to teep Sylvie off. Two teeps. Oh, and then a nice little step out. Sylvie tries a, 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 a long grab. Boom, this is a huge point. But what's really happening here is Hong Morakot, with her size and her dexterity, she's trying to discourage Sylvie. She wants Sylvie to take that extra step to stand um, to start her attacks from further out at a more customary distance. 
She does not want Sylvie being leg on leg. But that knee that Hung Morcock gave her, oh, look at this. She knows to cross her hands. She knows to lock her hands. Big deal. Look how relaxed she is. She's up on her toes. One of the interesting things about this fight is Sylvie's a huge fucking clinch fighter. It's not like she's clinching someone who doesn't know how to clinch. Uh, Hong Morakot is um, skilled. She has great instincts. I mean, even in this thing where Sylvie like gets a grab on her, right? Hong Morakot is just like, no problem. I'll just lock, posture up, took a little knee, which actually is nice for Sylvia to sneak in. And then she punishes her for it with that same whip over. It's just such a beautiful way to show the judges that this girl's too small to fight me. Let her clinch me all day long. Like these are stories being told. One of the beautiful things about um, Thai scoring is their stories being told. It's not points. I mean, there are points, but it's the points in the context of stories being told. Clips her with a nice cross. It looks like an abbreviated version of the combination she threw earlier. She's trying to make Sylvie fight at a distance. And actually, Sylvie's a little bit distorted here. Again, that chopping kick, which was successful in the first round. So, oh, this is a big deal. I can't believe I didn't take that note. Sylvie talks a lot about the low kick destroyer. It's in the Muay Thai library. The, Muay, the low kick destroyer is putting the kneecap or just below the kneecap on the low kick. It stops all low kicks. It's actually a very simple technique and you just have to learn how to be accurate and time it nicely. Look at this. right there. It takes the low kicks out of a game. Distorts Sylvia a little bit, I guarantee you uh, Hong Morikot felt that. It just discourages, and that was a big, that was a big weapon um, for her in the first round, and she started using it in the second round. Here, Sylvia again with that crowding forward check. Uh, Hong Morikot answers, with, the, um, with her opposite leg. She just does not like that knee to knee, that uh, front leg to front leg crowding. And look where she's coming. Hong Morakot starting with that elbow that she likes, her left elbow. Boom. Sylvie's got a pretty good high guard on that, but the elbow is sneaking through. You can see it getting in there. Sylvie got enough control of the wrist here to nullify that elbow. But we saw that elbow from the first round. Just a very beautiful fighter, Hung Murakot. Here Sylvie clinches up and starts the rotation game again with the knee. You can see Hung Murakot is not stabilized. Look at these rotations. Sylvie felt, also felt that knee, uh, I mean that elbow, and her urgency and intensity has increased. Oh, here Sylvie is distorting for the first time Hong Morakot. Look at this. This is a little 30 pound lighter fighter, totally distorting a taller, bigger, probably stronger, knowledgeable uh, clinch fighter. And how is she doing it? Just with um, technical leverage. She's got the arm framed out. Look at this, frame. Arm framed out. Her head is tight up on the jaw. It's not really pressing it, but what you do when you put this head here like this is you blind your opponent, they cannot visually see the control you are framing on their left arm. 
And when you cannot see what's doing, what's happening to you, there is a kind of disconnect, I think, that the, the control you're exerting on the frame becomes more pronounced. This is a really important head position, and Sylvie's like right on her like glue. Look at this. Totally distorted though. She's straight up, but she's actually bent. And then here, the frame, the dynamics of the turn, and the knee. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at this. Look how she is just like warped. Sylvie's foundation. Again, these like this little vortex Sylvie puts on it. She's cross facing her here. Returns, regains the frame. Again. Boom. This, po this posture that Sylvie likes in the clinch, which is a kind of like Blanca crouch down, is discouraged in Thailand. Like it's a design really of Sylvie's own nature. And one of the things they say in Thailand is to, to um, natural, what something's natural to you. Sylvie creates these like frame locks, but she actually like curls and embeds herself into the collar area with her head of her opponent and giving her opponent no real posture. When you bend like this though, you're losing posture root points, so you have to be effective. But look at this, off the ground, so he's off the ground, scoring, rotating her opponent. This is this posture, I've never seen anyone use it before. It's Sylvie's own uh, technical, um, like everybody finds their own um, leverage points. And she loves this. You do get buried head technical locks that uh, ties do, but this isn't even a lock position. This is a frame and hold position and lock positions by ties do not really have this rounded uh, curvature. Um, they, ad they adopt other postures which are um, more appreciated. But this is Sylvie's style. It's already the second round and Sylvie took that very close elbow strike and she's feeling like this urgency in the fight now because this big girl is trying to hurt her. Another, another thing that Sylvie's doing that she didn't used to do uh, earlier in her career is she's scoring constantly in all these little posture changes. She keeps the points landing, which are really important because it keeps the ref from breaking, breaking her. And it keeps the tabulation going. It's showing control. Look at that frame out. Beautiful frame out and score at the same time and rotation and this dynamic rotation. It's just off the ground, like as a smaller fighter to be aerial on, climbing on a bigger fighter is a big deal. Here she frames out the other arm. Look at this, she's off the ground. Ooh. It shows incredible dexterity. It's like being on a trapeze or something. Then she scores with the other knee off the ground. Damn, I just love this fight. Sylvie's like, I've been spearing you with my forward check and crowding you. Now it's time that we go where I wanna be. It's no different than an MMA fighter taking, um, taking a fight to the ground. Here it's just, let's fight in a foam booth. More rotations, framings, scoring. Here's an interesting little drag along the ropes. Sylvie so should be standing up. She could have had the better position here. She's still framing her arm. It's gonna be broken by the ref. Really nice. Look at this. Look how Hong Morkok comes out of this crouched position. 
This is a very big, small thing. It's very, to be contradictory about it. Both fighters are hunched over and they're in a bad position. I talked a little bit about Sylvie's roop recoveries. Look at Hong Morikot. She's slumped. When she comes out of here, look how strong Sylvie is already in posture. Look at the posture differences. Hong Morikot recovers herself. Sylvie's upright. Hong Morikot looks like she's been affected by this continuous clinch. She's retreating now. She's like, I'm gonna defend my space, my zone. Sylvie comes in with a little bit of that leading um, knee. And here we go. Hong Murakot uses that left elbow again. She's, this is the third time I think she's tried it. Boom, and I think she cuts Sylvie here. Is this the cut? And as Sylvie immediately, she didn't get the guard up quite soon enough, but she immediately frames on that arm. Score, rotate, deform the head and the posture. This is actually a nice counter that uh, Hung Morkot's doing. It shows that she understands clinch. She has a cross face on Sylvie. Sylvie's got double inside position, but as a bigger fighter, she should be able to leverage this. You can see, look at this. Hung Morkot's knee come up, her left knee. Sylvie wiggles her hip in and alleviates that contact. Very advanced, a little evasive move by Sylvie. Hong Murakot is in decent position, but she cannot score. Boom, knee again, with a nice inside, double inside position. Boom, oh, these little, she's actually really good at this. She got big jumping right knees and then little stabbing knees with her left knee. She actually, it's her neck knockout knee the one she uses to knock out fighters. Hong Morikot is trying to knee back. She can't even. Look at Hong Morikot's left leg. Sylvie's control over her neck actually defeats the knee. Again, this is so important, arm control. arm control, twerking, boom. She's trying, Hong Morikot's trying to beat her with strength. Sylvie has all the technique. Again, framing. Again, scoring. These are, the intense repetition of these scores adds up. Just trying to lock her hands. Hong Morikot, look at that. Nice to lock her hands, but look at the posture. And Sylvie's dragging back here to dra further dramatize or bring out that posture. Here comes that left knee from Hong Rokat, but Sylvie like breaks it with downward pressure. The knee doesn't even come. Like she, this is a 60 kilo girl. She can't even, Sylvie's control over the posture is so complete that she can't even be countered in the clinch, like effectively. Like with knees, the knees can't even land. Her control is incredible. Here's one that lands. Big score to the midsection. She tries that whip. Hong Morikot's gonna try that whip that has put Sylvie on the ground twice. She's got her hands locked, right? 
Sylvie, she actually tries to trip her with her foot. Sylvie's got better balance this time. And in fact, she's gonna try to trip her the other way. She basically does the same, reverses the dynamics. Off balances her. It's 60 kilos. Tries to throw a little kick on top. They both do actually. In the commentary it says, at this point, the ref notices the blood from the earlier elbow that had snuck in there. See that? Sylvie's bleeding. And in the commentary she talks about how pissed she is because she actually had booked a fight for the next night in Chiang Rai and with a cut she has to cancel at the last second. The one thing she wanted to do in this fight was not get cut. She didn't, even winning wasn't as important as not getting cut. Getting cut pissed her off. Here's a nice frame from Sylvie, that lead spear knee crowding the lead leg. She has both arms framed. And that big left elbow, which had already cut Sylvie, this girl wants to open up that elbow, right? Had already cut Sylvie, is there. But Sylvie has it framed out properly this time. Again, look at these. This frame is just so beautiful. Bomb, just swimming it up. Ah, uh, and here, so he's got that head nice and close on the cheek, blinding her opponent to the look to the side of control, and she's actually moved her inside position, which she's framed, to an outside position, like a kind of loop that she does a lot. This is really, really good. She can actually loop all the way around the arm if she wants. There she goes back inside and scores. Again, maintaining. At no time is she losing this little vector knot that is controlling her opponent. It's just such great technique. Sneaks in a left knee. Breaking her opponent's root. Rotates to the right. Another big jumping score. Oh, and look at her. These rotations are really big. Just dragging her down. This is 60 kilos. Here this shows the relative root controls. Head uh, posture is broken. Score, she keeps scoring. These little things are really big. They're things very hard to develop, take many years to just keep scoring while on the move. And that little score collapses her. Again, importance of Roop. Sylvie stands over her on the ground, showing dominance. These are important. Hong Murakot gets up. Now the fight is really like in danger. That was a big, big point. Even though Sylvie got cut in Thailand, if you get cut, it's kind of like a 10-8 round. You can lose the fight if you just, if you don't pull ahead in a big way. One of the most beautiful things about this fight to me is Sylvie just got cut. A cut she wanted to avoid under all circumstances because she was fighting, I think, the next day. And she immediately puts the clamps on the fight. Like, her intensity, her rising to the occasion is just like instantaneous. It's total game. Sylvie has these layers in herself as a fighter, but one of them is she can hit the next gear and the next gear. And what's beautiful about this fight is the gears she's hitting to me. This girl's just been put on the ground. Sylvie comes in with that crowding knee. Here comes that elbow. Again, the one she got cut with. But you can see this time that Sylvia's framed inside that elbow. It misses. And Sylvie controls with that frame. And this is a big part, big huge thing. That elbow, if it landed, could have turned the whole fight again against her. Big score. These scores are so important. 
They occupy and overwhelm your opponent. And here we go. Sylvia just scored. Again, the rotation. Drag down. Sylvie's creating space for herself. She has the inside frame. And Sylvie throws her own elbow. And it's actually from inside the frame, upward and upward elbow. What we all it's similar to what Rambaugh calls a pistol whip elbow, or what we call Rambaugh's pistol whip elbow. It is like upward, but kind of like with a whipping action, not just a kind of um, it's not a fairly fully vertical elbow, although it's thrown from the inside. Oh, it's so pretty. And this comes off of Sylvie framing the elbow attack, like warding the elbow attack, framing it, scoring, getting, taking a little bit of distance, freeing her arm, and then ripping it right up the middle with a little kind of uh, diagonal action, and her opponent goes down and is knocked out. I don't know if she is unconscious or what, but in terms of dominance, Sylvie has just, oh, and then we have the Roop again, the story of the Roop, this incredible, like, she was posturing early in the fight after deformations. Oh man, it's so majestic. For me, watching this fight, I'm like, the intimidations that Sylvie had to undergo, facing somebody five weight classes, I don't know, bigger than her, and the entire fight was this spatial battle. I am just going to spear myself into your lead leg area, your space right in front, in the pocket. I'm gonna crowd that. And her opponent had this beautiful vocabulary of defeats. If she had decided to just stay away from Sylvie, the fight might have turned out differently. But then she started getting frustrated with Sylvie's pressure, and it wasn't even striking pressure. It was just proximity that she decided she was gonna start elbowing Sylvie out of the zone. And this just allowed Sylvie to get into like beautiful, Beautiful clinch, uh, frames, postures. And this is one of the things about Sylvia that's so interesting, is that she's super technical, actually. But you can't see a lot of it, because it's not high flying. Well, here she is high flying. But a lot of what she does is interior positions and little dynamic uh, vortex turns that change the ability of her opponent to respond. And she fight, she imposes the fight in the space that she wants it to be at. And this fight is one of my favorite fights because of the position it took right after they had, she had beaten Tanan Chinook. Three or four weight classes bigger, three weight classes bigger, let's say, who had then flew to Japan and won the world title again or defended her world title in Japan. She had just beaten Tanan Chinook and they're like, okay, you can be Tananchanuk, we're gonna give you a giant. She gives it, she comes to fight the giant. The giant fucking like knows how to move, is super skilled. Cuts Sylvie. The cut is like, you're gonna probably lose the fight unless you take serious control of it. And Sylvie takes control of it instantaneously. Like, in the midst of the cut, she's taking control of it. The amount of dominance she did, she exhibited in this fight, so quickly, was just like, I don't know, it's very beautiful to me. So there you have it. This is one of my favorite fights of Sylvie. I don't know if we'll do more of these, uh, but I've been watching this fight and admiring it. I watched it several times, and I'm just like, wow. I'm just amazed at, I, I, I don't think Sylvie gets the credit for the degree of her technical competence. And I think I wanted to bring out some of those elements that are maybe hidden when you just are looking at a fight just in a regular thing. This fight 
is on YouTube also with Sylvie's commentary so you can see how she saw it, how she felt about it. Um, and that there are, no fighter gives commentary quite like Sylvie. It's so awesome, but I wanted to add my own perspective. So thank you everybody. I um, hope you enjoyed it.